Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game, also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely Ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game, so just tell your friends magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. It is a Monday, a quite magical Monday here in the studio as I record. And I am, yeah, grateful to have the opportunity to share, reflect, explore the potentials and possibilities of existence with each and every one of you tuning in. And today I want to talk, as I often do, things that bubble up in my own life. And, uh, One of the things that has bubbled up in my own life, uh, or sort of indirectly, um, is sleeping. And the, you know, obviously sleep is the most rejuvenating thing that we don't fully understand. Science doesn't even fully understand, but we know we need it. And when we don't get it, uh, we suffer. (laughs) And I know a lot of people, the reason I wanted to talk about this, because I know a lot of people, it's a pretty common thing to, to struggle with sleep. And I've seen my own partner, Karen, who's always been a really good sleeper in recent months, having increased uh, issues with, you know, sleeping, waking up and her mind's racing and having trouble going back to sleep. And, you know, here comes the sun and, you know, two hours of sleep have happened and, you know, it just like taking a toll. And so, you know, I got talking with her about this the other day um, and exploring why, like what's happening, what's changed? Like, you know, her experience has always been a a really good, really good sleeper. And, you know, then I started, we started talking and thinking about just like, well, why do some people seem to do better with less sleep even, you know, it's one thing to like, I, I personally sleep really well. Um, my brother's always struggled with sleep. Um, and you know, I started talking, talking with her about, uh, our mutual friend, Shane, who, uh, I mean, he's like an alien. I have never seen anyone who he's probably, what is he? 53 years old and went to Burning Man with him last year. He's one of my, my best friends and, uh, about to see him down at Envision Festival, actually, uh, who, for any of you listening, who may be going to Envision, uh, shout out and I'll see you, see you in the jungle of Costa Rica in a week or so. And Shane is actually, um, this friend that I'm referring to is actually, uh, now one of the owners of Envision Festival. He, he bought out one of the original original founders in the last year. So I'm going with him and it'd be cool to kind of have the experience where it's like, oh, this is my one of my best friends now. It's his festival, right? So, um, and uh, anyway, uh, talking about him though, I've spent a lot of, you know, gone to a lot of uh, festivals and things with him, spent Burning Man with him last year. And, you know, this, this guy's in his early 50s and can run circles around any 21-year-old energetically. I've never seen anyone who, who just, he doesn't seem to need to sleep. Like, I mean, at all, we, all week at Burning Man, which is harsh conditions, intense, I mean, he probably sleeps, I don't know, maybe on average three hours a night. If, you know, a lot of times he, he goes for days without sleep. Then he'll sleep for six hours. And, you know, but if I had to average it out, probably three hours. And... It's like, what's different? What's different about this this person? And 
One is I never, he's always, he's such pure positive energy. I, and I had a, a friend who, you know, claims to be able to see energy moving and talks about he's really loves dancing and how he spends a lot of time at these events uh, dancing. And she had, we were talking about this uh, at one time and she's like, yeah, I can see when he's dancing, like he's literally connecting with source. He's in such a state of joy energy is just like flowing into a system and it's feeding him and fueling him. So you go, you know, someone else, maybe it's depleting them running around the festival grounds and he's getting just filled up um, because of this connection. And so, you know, as I was talking through with my partner about her, her challenge and, you know, then bringing up Shane and like, what is it with this guy that he doesn't hardly need to sleep, you know? And um, so it, it led me down the path of like, you know, looking, I found Abraham talking about this very subject, uh, Esther Hicks, and I'll share here in a few minutes, but she really confirmed a lot of what I was, what, what I was thinking and feeling. And that is, you know, when you are in, obviously we all know the story of waking up stressed and you start thinking about stressful thoughts. And then that is putting you into a state of, um, fight or flight, anxiousness, not, not, um, you know, not relaxed and you can't shut your mind off and therefore you're not, you know, you're not going to become, go into a, a slumber state, an unconscious state if your mind is racing and you're in fight or flight mode because you're worried about rent or your job or your kids or your, your relationship or whatever it is. And so, you know, I take someone like Shane as an example. Um, you know, this person, I hardly ever see them not in an open-hearted, optimistic, loving state. And then you throw that into the mix, you know, uh, a passion for dancing, which becomes like a divine act of, you know, connecting with source and what's happening. The faucet of energy is turning on. And so the question becomes, how can we all turn on the faucet more? How can we all move into that pure positive state that you'll hear her talking about, you know, how we, when we come into this life, we come from a stream of pure positive energy before we incarnate in the physical dimension. And then that, you know, you create some, some separation from that in, in physicality. And that's instantly why a baby's crying, as you'll hear her talk about. And it's like, so how do we become, you know, uh, more like our higher self, more like our non-physical self? And it all comes down to this, you know, this uh, receptive state of in non-resistance to what is at the end of the day, right? If you wake up and you have no resistance to anything that's happening, then you are going to relax. And if you relax, you naturally will go into that state of rejuvenation and rest. And, and so, you know, that really, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, and, and I know, of course, this is, it's hard sometimes because you understand this theoretically and then you're still having the reaction that you're having. And that's really where it gets challenging. And that's what even talking to my partner about it, she's like, yeah, I, I understand a lot of it. And, you know, I understand this and yet I can't, I'm not turning my mind off. And it's like, you know, what can you do? What can be done to um, release any of the um, anxiety about what's wrong, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be changed? Uh, and I think, when you can move into a state of full surrender, as in, you know, you've never had control, you only have the illusion of control. So really, if you become infinitely or indefinitely rather, uh, you know, out of control, you can kind of like surrender. It's like the the saying that I share in the golden key or, or the, the quote from Chogyam Trungpa. He says, the bad news is you're falling through the air, nothing to hang on to, no parachute. The good news is there's no ground. And that really sums it up, right? Like us grasping at solving problems uh, with all this mental activity. It's like you are not in control at the, at the highest level. We're, we are, I mean, you know, you're on a rock hurtling through space, spinning and, you know, spinning while simultaneously going, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles a second or whatever. It's like... <laughs> it's like the illusion of some level of control and you move into this this deep trust like the more we can move into like one of the keys in the golden key trust the mystery the more we can trust the mystery 
and, and know enough to know, you know what, this is so much bigger than me. And uh, I am given some options and opportunities to make decisions within a certain framework. And anything outside of that, I, I you know, just using my intelligence, my logic to let it go, because it's illogical and irrational for me to continue to try and sit there and problem solve things that are outside of my control. And if you move into a deep sense of trust, and I think that's what really works well for me. I, I feel like I've, I have gotten good at this. It's like, okay, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling anxiety about something. I'm not lo loving the way something is going. Ah, but man, I trust the process. I trust that this is happening for me, not to me. I trust that there are no problems, only solutions. I really believe that with every ounce of my being. So every time I find myself getting into that, that, you know, anxious uh, thought spiral, right? Laying in bed and, oh, that you feel the energy and the, the thoughts are racing. I'll catch myself whenever I, the, the times I have that, be like, ah, you know what? This is futile, what I'm doing. And I, tr I just deeply trust the process of what's, what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Exactly what should happen. And it may look very different than what I think should happen, but I don't know nothing <laughs> compared to, you know, I'm playing checkers and my higher self is playing chess, right? So I trust my higher self. I trust the non-physical part of myself to, um, you know, control these parts of, of, of that, that appear out of control to me. They're actually in good hands. They're actually in better hands than my own. So why don't I just release resistance? And when you release resistance to what is and trust the process, you're inevitably going to you fall asleep. You're going to relax, deep relaxation. Or as Abraham talks about here, you don't even necessarily need that. It's about the rejuvenation and the relaxation period, like recharging, tuning back in. And I've heard this said before that, you know, science is a little baffled by sleep. And it's like, I, I believe that's exactly what Abraham talks about here. You'll hear in the clip that what, what's happening is we are tuning, fully tuning with our non-physical self, which is uh, it's like plugging our battery into its battery pack. <laughs> we're, we're the battery pack and we're plugging it back into the power socket, right? And so that that's your way of getting energy, creating re rejuvenation. And wow, like we that's within our, our grasp and we can get there logically. You know, a lot of times it's like, uh, you know, all these emotions come up and energies come up and, it, it, but you know, you're really, when you can get, rational and come to a logical conclusion that that really makes this is what makes the most sense of how things are structured for me for sure and certainly the results it gets me speak the loudest and so i know you've all been there too you have these moments where you're fully trusting and you find yourself you're not trusting and anxiety creeps in finding your way back navigating and the more you do it the stronger you get at it the better you get at it and that's that's the dance so with all that being said, I'm going to share this clip from Abraham um, from Abraham Hicks entitled Help, I Can't Sleep. Take a listen. Abraham, my question is for myself, but for all the people that have a hard time sleeping. I think part of it is uh, about the mechanics of what I heard you say earlier, it was really touching to me about really accepting where I am now. Well, that will keep you awake. In other words, if life has caused you to become something more and for whatever reason you're not letting yourself go, there's an uneasiness that's hard to deal with. Why do you want to sleep anyway? Um, it feels good. It feels rejuvenating. Well, it, it is rejuvenating for this reason. Let's talk about this from the flow perspective. So from the non-physical perspective, before you came forth into this physical body, you were a stream of non-physical, pure, positive energy. You're flowing. And then you're born into this physical body. And in the moment that you're born, there is a subtle splitting of vibration. Because now not only do you have this non-physical perspective of utter well-being, but now even though you can't speak the words about it in your first day infancy in your little physical body, there is a splitting of your vibration. That is why babies cry when they are born. You mourn at funerals. You should mourn at birth. <laughs> Much harder to be born than to die. When you croak, you go right back into pure positive energy. 
But as you're born into this physical body, there is a little bit of separation, just as you take on the worry of your mother, for example. So then, as you move through life experience, you go to sleep and you become one energy. You wake up, and depending upon what you're thinking about, you may, if you're afraid of something, you really have split energy. If you're worried about something, not so much. If you're optimistic, hardly split at all. When you're really in love, you're one pure positive energy stream. When you are arguing with someone, you split your energy. When you meditate, you become one stream. In fact, that's the reason we teach meditation, is that when you meditate, you quiet your thought. When you quiet your thought, you stop any contradictory thought. When you stop any contradictory thought, you close the gap, and you're offering one stream again. When you wake up, depending upon what you've been thinking about and what's most active in your vibration, you split your energy. When you go to sleep, you're one energy stream. And that is the refreshment factor. That's it. You can rest while you're sitting in the chair. You can rest while you are taking a walk. In other words, your body does not need inaction. The sleeping really is 100% the rejuvenating factor about the opportunity for you to close the vibrational gap and stop the resistance or the tug of war. Now, meditation is really a more powerful tool than sleeping because when you meditate, you're awake, you're alert, you are aware of your vibrational relationship and you are deliberately quieting your mind. You're deliberately focusing your mind in a way that allows the closing of the gap. While while you sleep, it is happening at such an unconscious level that when you wake up, you're more likely to beat the drum of the things that you've been thinking about right where you last left it. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would begin by saying... Sleeping is not what it's cracked up to be and it's really not understood very well. And while I do like the rejuvenation of slumber, I can find rejuvenation in other ways. Have you ever heard anybody say, he sleeps like a baby? Meaning he's not worried about this and that and the other. He's not worried about how he has to pay the rent. He's not worried about who loves him and who doesn't love him. In other words, the reason that the baby can slumber so easily is because there is never that much of a gap. And if there is anything that keeps you in that restless state, it is that contradicted energy. Lie in your bed and say to yourself, whether I sleep or not, I definitely am going to relax. And then say to yourself, whether I sleep or not, I love the comfort of this wonderful bed. Say to yourself, whether I sleep or not, isn't it nice that I have this time opportunity that I can just set everything else aside, nothing needs me right now, where I can just enjoy the comfort of this bed. And then lie there and focus upon the comfort of the bed. Focus upon what it's made of and focus of, upon the way it receives your body. Focus upon the comfort of the covers that are covering you. Feel the deliciousness of the fabric that is touching your body. And as you focus with appreciation upon these things, it's better than meditating because in that deliberately looking for something to feel good about, you close that vibrational gap. And as you close that vibrational gap, if you've decided that you want to sleep, there will be no resistance that will keep you from it and you'll drift right off to sleep. And it will be a sleep that will be restful. If you don't go to sleep, say to yourself, no problem at all because I've accomplished here or I'm working to accomplish or I'm pointed in the right direction of accomplishing what slumber is about anyway, you see. You come into these physical bodies with such eagerness. And the more connected to source energy you become, the more you begin to hear the call of source. And the call of source is louder and louder and louder the closer you get to it. And so many of you are hearing the call of source, which is well, Esther woke up this morning at 4.30. And she's just beginning a whole new book and we've just given her the outline about it and she's feeling very much excitement about it because she can feel the power of this book and she woke up this morning much earlier than she intended to wake up and laid there and just allowed the book to sort of roll across her mind and she smiled a big grin and she thought should I get up and start writing this down or should I just enjoy it and we said just enjoy it we want you to just begin to feel the movement of this book when sources calling you you don't want to sleep through it 
You want to wake up. You want to experience it. Jerry hardly sleeps at all. He goes to sleep and he wakes up and then he works on something. Then he'll sleep a little and he wakes up and he works on something. The call of source is so loud within him. And it isn't because he can't sleep. It's because he's being rejuvenated by other things other than sleep. Sleep is for rejuvenation. And the less rejuvenation you need because you're keeping yourself tuned through the power of the direction of your thought, then the less you'll want to sleep. The little ones don't want to sleep nearly as much as you want them to. (laughs) And maybe that's what's happened to so many of you as adults, as you remember that sleep was pushed at you because your parents wanted the relief of thinking about what you were doing. And so you begin associating it in a sort of screwy way. Slumber is release of resistance. So there was that accepting where I am right now. And then finding the thought that feels a little bit better. That would be what I would be doing when I'd be noticing the softness of the covers. That would be a thought that feels a little better. What you're actually doing, that is definitely what you're doing. But here's an even more powerful aspect to it. By focusing upon how wonderful the covers feel, you've deactivated that thought you're worried about. Because you can't focus upon how good the covers feel while you're worried about not being able to pay the rent or whatever. In other words, while you're focusing on one thing, that's what's active. And so as you lie there with the deliberate intent of relaxing and enjoying, then you clean up your vibration relatively easily. Let's put it to you this way. People fall asleep. Oh, this is really good. Should we keep it to ourselves or just share it with you? (laughs) People fall easily asleep when they are in close alignment to source. Have you ever awakened in the morning and it's not really time to get up and you just slip back into the deliciousness of that sleep? Well, that's because you just woke up and you're less resistant than you were when you went to bed. When you went to bed, it was hard to go to sleep. But now you've been asleep. It's easy to go back to sleep because the resistance factor is so much less now. Sometimes people fall into bed in utter exhaustion. Their hard work has distracted them from things that are bothering them, and so they're still in alignment. In other words, you can flop into bed from physical exhaustion and have no resistance and go right to sleep. Or you can lay down when you aren't physically exhausted, when you are mentally out of whack, and you'll stay right awake. Or you can bring yourself more into vibrational alignment, and you'll go to sleep. Do you get what slumber is? You're pure positive energy. You wake up, you go to sleep. You wake up, you go to sleep. In other words, that slumber is the withdrawal role of thought from things that might be resistant in nature and when you are withdrawn from things that are resistant in nature you're in a state of utter allowance so let's call sleep what it is sleep is a moment of alignment energy wise with that which you are and so doesn't it follow that the better you feel the more easily you'll drift off to sleep and the more you're fussing and worrying about things the, the harder it would be for you to accomplish that What we would do long before we start moving toward the bed or toward slumber, we would begin just appreciating softly the aspects of our physical life experience. We would look back over the day and we would say, this has been a good day. And we would appreciate ourselves for our participation within it. We would try to remember the extension that we are of source energy and we would smile and think about the contrast that we've allowed source to explore through us we would think about our own expansion and what this life has produced in terms of more wanting we would feel proud about this day and about being alive we would try to feel that feeling of worthiness we would really make peace with where we are no matter whether we accomplished a fraction of what we meant to get done that day or whether we turned the world around in that day we would reach for thoughts of well I am where I am and where I am is okay in other words that making peace with where you are is really a powerful component in drifting off to sleep and what you'll discover in time is that sleep will become irrelevant because alignment will be so pervasive within your experience and you'll find yourself sleeping of course you will we are not saying that you won't sleep it just won't be an issue anymore yes thank you yes indeed yeah so powerful you are a stream of pure positive energy pre-incarnation I love how she says it's much harder to be born than to die. Uh, That's an interesting way to look at it, right? 
uh, makes sense. Um, and, and, and really, it's about stopping these contradictory thoughts to what you are. And that is that, you know, the first book ever written by Julianne of Norwich, uh, you know, she, the first woman to write any book in the English language, um, you know, what, like 1200 AD or something like that. And she had an experience uh, going, a near-death experience where she feels like she connected with with uh, Christ consciousness, Jesus. And at the time, you know, that was Middle Ages, like super dark, hell brimstone, very, you know, kind of scary religious energy. And what she experienced was pure positive energy. And she came in and, and what she said is, you know, the message she came back with is all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. And that's the, that's it right there. In the end, at, at the end of the day, it all settles out in a way that is just beautiful and perfect and profound and well. You are wellness. That is what all life goes back to ultimately. So trying to sit there and figure it all out with our limited perspective is futile, right? And she, she talks about, you know, sleeping being misunderstood. We don't fully understand it. It's just the opportunity to close the vibrational gap. Meditation does it too. As she says, you, you, you can, it's about getting the rejuvenation, uh, you know, and I love how she points out, look, whether I sleep or not, I'm definitely going to relax. And, and if you're focused on a positive thing like this, the comfort of the bed and the sheets and how wonderful it is that you have the opportunity to just take this time, what a gift. Um, you can't be focusing on the, the, the rent or the lack thereof or the problem it, you, if you're focused on something that you're grateful for. And I love this, you know, hey, tell the story you've accomplished the aim uh, of relaxing whether you fall asleep or not. What a great, empowering story for someone who is struggling with sleep. Now you've taken the charge out of the problem, right? And we all have seen the placebo effect, you know, at 30% or something more of all healings, including surgery or placebo. The story that you're telling is so important. Okay, so let's tell the story, whether you fall asleep or not. I, no longer any resistance to not falling asleep, right? And, and, and it does make sense. I, I know what she's talking about when she says, when source is calling, you, you don't want to sleep through it. You are, you are inspired and ready to get up. And so you, you need less, the, you know, the less rejuvenation you need because you've been out of alignment all during the day, the less sleep you need. And it's just this release of resistance. Lumber is release of resistance. And, and a great example of that is like, look, when you wake up to go to the bathroom or something, you usually can go back to sleep much quicker because you've, the resistance is so minimal. It's it's because you've been in alignment for hours on end, right? Um, and 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 this also this lastly this idea of practicing appreciation, getting the right um, you know momentum of positive optimistic thoughts, appreciating what happened during the day before going to bed. What a great great uh, you know energetic path to set yourself down uh, before climbing into bed. Well, that's my story. Hope I didn't put you guys to sleep. Ha ha ha. Hope you enjoyed it. And with that being said, I have a great song to uh, that you can listen to uh, before you go to bed tonight. It's called Gold Cap. I mean, it's called Mirage by Gold Cap. Awesome song. Awesome artist. Hope you enjoy. Till next time, journey well.